In this video we deal with the experimental determination of absolute zero. So let's get started. In everyday life, it is hardly possible to cool substances to such an extent that the temperature value on the Fahrenheit scale or the Celsius scale at absolute zero can be determined directly. Moreover, the atomic particles are not directly visible in order to be able to judge whether the point where the particles are motionless has actually been reached. This video will therefore show an experiment to determine absolute zero, which is the reference point for the Kelvin scale. In order to determine the temperature at absolute zero, at which the particles are completely motionless, the following considerations are made. First, if the temperature is to be a measure of the kinetic energy of the particles in a substance, then there must therefore be a lowest temperature at which the particles have no motion. Second, for a real gas, this would mean that all gas molecules contract to a smallest possible volume, since there is no particle movement. Third, for an ideal gas whose particles are assumed to be mass points without spatial dimension, the volume at this lowest possible temperature would therefore be zero. This means that absolute zero can be determined by examining the laws between temperature and volume for an ideal gas in more detail, and then determining the temperature at which the volume should theoretically become infinitely small. Helium comes closest to an ideal gas, which is why it makes sense to study the relationship between temperature and volume of helium more closely. The examination of this temperature-volume relationship can be done with a glass tube containing helium, or in the simplest case air. The glass tube is sealed with a plug of mercury to prevent the gas from escaping while at the same time allowing it to expand and contract. The gas volume can therefore always adapt to the given temperature at a constant ambient pressure. The different temperatures can be adjusted for example with a heat gun. The volume which the gas occupies at a certain temperature can be read off directly from the scale on the glass tube. In this experiment, it makes sense to first heat the gas to the maximum and to record the temperatures and volumina during cooling, as the cooling is much more uniform than the punctual heating with the heat gun. This ensures that the entire gas has a uniform temperature and does not only become hot here and there. If the experiment is now carried out for different temperatures and the resulting temperature-volume relationship is graphically represented, a linear connection becomes apparent. This means that the volume increases continuously with an increase in temperature and decreases uniformly with a decrease in temperature. With the help of this regularity a prediction can now be made which lowest possible temperature can be expected at an infinitely small volume. This then corresponds to absolute zero. For this purpose, the straight line in the diagram is continued for ever smaller volumes, also called extrapolation, until finally the smallest possible volume of zero is reached at the point of intersection with the temperature axis. Consequently, the point of intersection with the temperature axis corresponds to absolute zero, which is at minus 273.15 degrees Celsius on the Celsius scale and minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit on the Fahrenheit scale. This lowest possible temperature henceforth serves as the reference point for the Kelvin scale. Note that the same temperature at absolute zero will also be obtained again and again when other types of gas are used. For this reason, this temperature value is called absolute zero, which applies to all substances. The animation shows how, theoretically, the volume of the ideal gas continues to decrease as it cools until it finally becomes zero at absolute zero. We hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching.